What's the word, y'all? This parody field league that we have today is my favorite ever. The last time we saw a back-to-back -back champion was the 2018 Golden State Warriors. But since then, we've seen new team after new team. Then you got the old team Warriors. But new team after new team raised the Larry O'Brien trophy. Last year, the Boston Celtics dominated the regular season, dominated the postseason, and they're trying to be the first team since that 2018 Golden State Warriors team to go back-to-back. -back. And there are a few different arguments that make me think that they could do it. But also, the odds are just saying that it won't happen, but I'll talk about both sides of that. As we know, it is extremely, extremely difficult to go back to back. A dynasty that we, a team that we consider a dynasty is the Greg Popovich, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, Spurs team. That team never, ever won back to back championships. Here's the history, and I'm going to be relatively generous. I'm trying to just explain to you how ridiculously tough it is to go back to back nowadays. 2017, 2018 Golden State Warriors, they have two top 10-ish, again, top 10-ish players of all time with Kevin Durant and Wardell Stephen Curry. Then the team before that have the Miami Heat um, to, to do it. LeBron James, one of the two best players of all time. The Lakers have a top 10 player of all time and Kobe Bean Bryant. Before that, we see the Lakers who have a top 10-ish player of all time and, and Shaquille O'Neal. Before that, we see Michael Jordan, a top two player of all time. Akeem Olajuwon, a top 10-ish player of all time. Do you see the pattern here? Until we get to the uh, end of the 80s and the 90s where they do have Isaiah Thomas, who's one of the best point guards of all time. There's no conversation for him being in the top 10. But all of these other repeat slash three-peat teams are going to have one or two top 10-ish players of all time. So the odds are saying, if that is the, the recipe that it takes to go back to back, the Celtics don't really have that. Hey, shout out to my boy Jason Tatum. I don't know if he'll end up being top 10 of all time, but I'm going to bet that he doesn't. You know what I'm saying? It's just incredibly hard. Again, I think you can build a dynasty without going back to back as we've referenced the Spurs of previous years. But this Boston Celtics team is in a unique spot, right? Usually, in, oh, actually, I got a perfect example of this. I interviewed Michael Porter Jr. Um, at the beginning of last season, and we kind of talked about that championship run and everything like that. And he was very candid in my interview talking about how difficult it was to turn off the switch of celebrating to win a championship to thinking you got to get back to work and do it again. And as we saw, the Denver Nuggets didn't even come close to repeating. You got to think about all of these, these guys growing up have pretty much two things in mind when they're trying to become an NBA player. The first one, everybody wants to be the GOAT. Obviously, everybody can't be the GOAT, but everybody wants to be the GOAT, win all the accolades as possible. But the one thing that, that, that they really fight towards is being an NBA champion. And a lot of times these players get that championship and it's hard to try to figure out what they're grasping for next. And it's easy for a team coming off the championship to not be as successful, as dominant as the year that they did win it. This Boston Celtics team comes in in a very unique spot because somehow after winning a championship, they in their mind still are playing for things. And that is incredible. We'll start off at the head of the snake. Jason Tatum had a pretty bad shooting playoff run. And I mean, pretty, pretty bad as might be in safe here. He was very bad at shooting the basketball. I personally do believe that he had a really good playoff run, all things considered. I thought he had a good finals, but at the end of the day, the shot was not falling. And because of that, there was conversations around his name and it didn't help that he went into the Olympics with his jump shot still not being well. And he basically got DMP coach decisions a few times in his biggest games. So you think about winning the championship, the chips on your shoulder usually fall off, but for Jason Tatum, the chip is as big as ever. And he talked about it. Like, he's not a guy that needs exterior motivation to be a best version of himself. But now that he has that on top of it, it's another reason for him to get into that lab and become a better player. Because you watched that finals. It was ugly. It was ugly shooting. But there was a video. Let's see if I can find it. It's a side-by-side -side of Jason Tatum's jump shot last season versus what he's been in the lab working on. And there's a noticeable difference. Will it matter? I would hope so. Um, but he, he lost his fluidity. I think the biggest Celtics fans in the world would kind of tell you that the way he shoots the ball now is a lot different than when he was a young player, which makes sense. I mean, Jason Tatum's put up so, on so much muscle since he first came into the league. And as we see, once you put on that muscle, your mechanics shift dramatically. And it looks like he's closer to shooting uh, mechanically than he did in his younger years. And I think that's that's a really good thing. Because last year, for the most part, Jason Tatum was a good shooter. He's historically been a good shooter. This is the biggest I can make this image, by the way. So please bear with me. Um, last year we saw his shooting. Oh, wait, wait, no, I can make this better. Oh, beautiful. 
Um, last year, we saw his shooting completely, completely drop off, where for the most part, you think about October through January, he was sitting, let's say we average all of these out, 36, 37% from three. He gets to March, he is hot. He is hot in March. He's shooting 46%. And then April hits. And something happened in April where his jump shot completely falls off. And the playoffs, it's, it's atrocious. And then in June, it's just as bad. But luckily, again, the team is so well put. And they still win the championship regardless. I don't believe if they want to win this championship that you can have this level of drop off for Jason Tatum's jump shot come the postseason because teams should be healthier next year and teams are just better in the Eastern Conference now, whether it be the 76ers adding Paul George or I guess the Knicks adding uh, Carl Anthony Towns or, I mean, we can go on and on. It seems like a lot of these teams that they competed with last year are better on paper, so they can't afford for their star player to shoot this bad time and time again. And I don't, if you, if I was a betting man, which uh, sometimes I am, I would bet that he does not see this crazy amount of regression in the regular season and next year's postseason, but that's just me. So so they have this extra chip on their shoulder. That's just the Jason Tatum part of it. And then you'll get the Jalen Brown part of it, which also stems from the Olympics, where he felt some type of way about them not giving him a call once Kawhi Leonard was out. They instead go to his teammate, Derek White. Derek White plays pretty damn good in the Olympics, but for the most part, Jalen Brown still took that as motivation. And if you saw his media day, the man looks like a hundred pounds of muscle was added to him. He looks stronger. And he said he worked out better and more than any time before. And he just came off such a phenomenal season that I can't imagine what type of player he might look like next season. Again, these other teams win the championship and not lose the motivation, right? I think in order to be a professional athlete, you always have to have some type of chip and some type of motivation. But these guys had that, and then it just added on top of it. And it, it trickled down to Joe Mazzulla or even Jason Tatum in that uh, media day was talking about uh, Joe, Joe Mazzulla was so very happy that he didn't play in the Olympics and that he didn't get finals MVP because that just means that it's going to make him want to go harder. And that's, that's a plus. The second thing that the this Boston Celtics team has that some of these other teams that weren't able to repeat don't have is the ability to say... We brought back everybody that mattered last season. That's huge. Like, I'm sorry, O'Shea Brissett. <laughs> sorry, you're not on the team no more. But for the most part, the nine, 10 man rotation that they would run in the regular season, they are all completely back. And that's just rare. Even the, the championship before them, you saw Brucey e. Brown and Jeff Green get poached away to other teams because usually if a player plays so well in the postseason to help a team win a championship, their value goes up. Bruce Brown went from a dude that was uh, signing for minimum contracts to making $20 million annually. This Boston Celtics team got everybody under contract. Even uh, Drew Holiday signed an extension. And so, so they're back. All of it, all of the pieces are back. And I believe that the level of dominance that they went on in the regular season should be able to be replicated. Now, they might not win the Eastern Conference by 14 games like they did last year, but they should stand head and shoulders above the competition even though they still do have that injury of Chris Dasperzingis where they're telling us it's probably going to be December or January before he's back. But other than that, they should still be good. Like, Porzingis last year was the, the best break in case of an emergency asset you can have in basketball where he comes back and in that first game back in the NBA finals he is one of the main reasons they end up winning that right this year they cannot have that I don't think they win four playoff series if Chris Dasperzingis can only play four and a half games right so if he's going to miss some time you'd prefer that he does at the beginning of the season and not towards the end of the year but he needs to be completely healthy again you were able to coach through dominate all these other teams even when Porzingis was out that will not be the case this year. So Porzingis' health is one of the biggest X factors for them being able to repeat. In the regular season, I'm not going to overblow it. Like, I do believe that even though Al Horford's a million years old, that he'll be able to hold it down. I do believe in Xavier Tillman's being able to... We're talking about the regular season at the end of the day. Xavier Tillman being able to play regular season minutes and be productive. Lou Cornette, who turned himself from a stretch big to I don't shoot threes at all other than that one. I think he'll be able to hold down spot minutes. But I also... And pretty interested in the Tatum at the five minutes as they ran that a little bit last year. And I always liked that idea because Tatum is, again, such a great defender and a great rebounder, too. Now, in the postseason last year, they played a total of 10 minutes without a true center slash Al Horford on the court. Um, it had a net, a net rating of a minus 50. <laughs> so, um, not, not the best. I would love to go rewatch those minutes because it doesn't tell me what series this was or what the situation is. Uh, but still, I trust that Mizzou will be able to run some of these smaller ball lineups. Let me see what it looked like in the regular season. How about that? Because again, I think you need Porzingis to win a championship in the postseason. So I'm thinking about just being able to maintain greatness in the regular season. So let me see how many minutes we can get it at. All right, scrap that, dog. Don't put Jason Tatum at the five. According to last year's numbers, don't put Jason Tatum at the five because this other lineup of Drew Holiday, uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, 
Derek White and Peyton Pritchard has a net rating of minus 65. It's only five minutes and eight total games. So they, I don't know what the context is here. I got to go watch the film more than anything, but the numbers are not in favor of that. But I'm, I'm going to not care about the numbers and say that Tatum should play at least a little bit of five uh, in this regular season. Or we might see, what's the guy's name? Queta? Could Quaid, could Quaid come in and break to the rotation and run some some five? I don't really know. But I honestly do believe there's a chance when you have these top two dudes up top. And, and now I like, I don't really care about player rankings, right? On our podcast, we do ranking every position every single season, but I don't really enjoy doing it all the time. I do that more for content. It's, it's become increasingly harder to figure out where Jalen Brown rakes in the hierarchy of the NBA. Is he the 13th best player or is he the 23rd best player? Is he somewhere in between? I don't really know. But when you have the, these two top dudes and when they're, they're going, it's going to be just hard to stop. Now, there are some teams out east that have geared themselves up to guard the two big wing thing because I do believe that one of the main things about the, the Boston Celtics success is that it's almost impossible to build a team to guard both of them. Usually these teams have one big defensive wing guard and that's it. Aaron Neesmith, you either get Tatum or you get Jalen Brown and the other one's going to cook because we don't have an answer for him. Like the Knicks have two of the best wing defenders in basketball. I can't wait to see if we see that type of series and what that could look like. One of my favorite things about the Boston Celtics season um, was watching Drew Holiday shift his game completely. Again, once they acquired him, I thought they were going to win the championship, but I didn't expect him to... Um, change his game so dramatically where last time we saw him with Milwaukee, he again was his primary ball handler, was setting everybody up. He created for himself more than any time. And then once we got to the Boston Celtics, it took about a month or so. But once he was into that role, he was basically the best connector in basketball where it was. Actually, I may have find some stats. Hold on. This article was called Drew Holiday's Celtics Roll Through the Numbers. Um, shout out to Azad Ro Rose. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but here, here are the numbers. Where you can see last time he played in Milwaukee, his pull-up, this is what I'm just going to call self-created three-point shots. He's taken 4.3 a game, and he very rarely was a catch-and-shoot player. And as you can see, in his first, year, uh, first month with the Boston Celtics, of course, all his volume is going to go down because he's no longer like the second most important player, but he still was creating his own three-point shots, and then eventually it flipped. Once we got to January, and this is where he turned himself into one of the best catch-and-shoot players in ball, we was taking three a game and only two pull-ups and so on and so forth. Then we get to April, where it was uh, 2.7 to 2. That's huge. Like, he, again, shifted his game completely. And Drew Holiday has been a hit-or-miss per playoff performer, right? I remember when he was traded away to the Boston Celtics, there were Milwaukee Bucks fans saying, good luck. We've seen him shoot uh, four of 17. I may be exaggerating. We've seen him have pretty pretty stinky playoff games here and there, but that was under the assumption that his role would be the same. And now that his role has shifted, where offensively, he's what? If everybody's healthy, he's the fourth, maybe fifth most important offensive player on the team? That's crazy to think about. We're talking about Drew Holiday here. And then we talk about him not being overtaxed as a player come postseason. Like this first playoff series against the Heat, he was stinky. I didn't realize he shot 35% with seven points per game. Then after that, we get to the second round versus Cleveland. He's 13 points per game, 50-40. He's 18 points per game in the conference finals in that sweep where he's 58-40. and 40. And then in the NBA finals, he's 14 points per game. Like these numbers are because his role dramatically shifted where he's not looking to create for himself and Giannis and Chris. But instead, I'm going to defend my ass off and take what the defense gives me. I mean, some of these games in the playoffs, brother was sitting in the dunker spot waiting for his opportunity like Bruce Brown of the year before that. So it was just so cool to see players who, again, has been a two-time All-Star in his career, just turn himself to the ultimate role player. And we talk about ultimate role player, we got to mention the name Derek White because that's the thing that this man has been doing for years. So again, it is as complete as a team as you can get, but I'm still finding myself, I don't, I don't know who I'm picking as my champion. Eventually, I'm going to have to do an episode here in my predictions for the season. I don't know if I'm still picking the Boston Celtics or I'm going to try to play the odds to pick some other team. Regardless, the Celtics are geared to do it. And if they did do it, I don't think I would be surprised whatsoever. And for all the people that are still upset about the path, get over it. At the end of the day, they got the banner. At the end of the day, they got the banner. Bro, if, if my favorite team went against injured team after injured team and injured team and still won a championship, guess what? I don't give a damn. I'm getting Chicago Bulls NBA champion on my forearm, on my forehead. Fuck it. So I just, I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I've just grown out of Twitter conversation. I don't care who you go against to get there. At the end of the day, for the regular season and in the postseason, you were the number one team and you raised that Larry O'Brien trophy. It only gets tougher from here, though. And if they flame out this year, I'm not looking revisionist history. And 2024 championship is not as valuable. That doesn't matter. They did it. Now they got to gear up to try to do it again. Let me know what you think.